Got another test yourself video here for electrode potentials. I think this is the third one I've done now. So the link to the question is in the description of the video. So just click on that, have a go, and then play on for the answers. Okay, so part A, we need two beakers connected via a salt bridge. The beakers can be either way around. OCR don't mind which way around you do them. So in the left hand one, I've gone for the Fe2 plus aqueous, Fe3 plus aqueous solution, both in that beaker. They'll be at one mole per decimeter cube because it's standard cell potential. And we need a platinum electrode there. We see the beakers are connected via the salt bridge. Make sure it goes into the solution. Um, and then in the other beaker, we've got the aqueous CR3 plus ions, one mole per decimeter cubed again. And this time we've got a chromium solid electrode. And the outside, the external circuit, um, connected via the voltmeter. The overall cell reaction, so we're comparing systems 2 and 8. So we're looking at the standard electrode potentials, 0.77 versus minus 0.74. So this half equation will go in the forwards direction because Fe3 plus has got the greater potential to accept electrons. So this will go in the forwards direction. This will go in reverse. Check the electrons. So we've got 1 versus 3. So this half equation will need to be trebled before adding it to that one. So the overall equation looks like that. The cell potential is just the most positive minus the least positive, 1.51 volts. Part B, select from the table the strongest oxidizing agent. So just remember oxidizing agents are electron acceptors. So these are the things on the left hand side of these half equations. So we're looking for the species most likely or most able to accept electrons. It's got the highest positive um, standard electrode potential. It's this one here, plus 1.33 volts. But remember, it's not just the dichromid six ions, it's the H plus ions as well. So both of those are needed for the mark. Okay, so moving on to part C now. Um, construct an equation for the reaction between acidified dichromate six ions and methanoic acid. You see I've written there three and six. There's a slight potential to um, make a little mistake here. So you can see you've got methanoic acid in seven and in six. Well, we want methanoic acid to react with the acidified dichromate ions. So this is gonna go in the forwards direction. Obviously it's got the most positive standard electrode potential. So this one's gonna go in reverse. So we need the methanoic acid on the right hand side of the half equation. If we'd chosen seven, it would actually be reacting with the methanol. So it was three and six. And what we need to do is get the electrons to cancel. So it's three multiplied by one, because still keep that at six. But we're adding to that um, equation six times three. And we're gonna cancel out some H plus ions. So the H plus ions go to eight on the left and down to zero on the right. So moving on to part D, we've got to explain in terms of electrode potentials why chromium is more reactive than copper. So if you think about how metals react, when they react, they lose their electrons to form positive ions. So in terms of electrode potentials, the species most likely to lose electrons will be the one with the least positive standard electrode potential because obviously a, a less positive standard electrode potential means the um, system will move this way and lose the electrons. So you can see the chromium minus 0.74 versus copper plus 0.34. So chromium is more likely to lose electrons than copper and so chromium is more reactive. So I've just phrased it like this, since the electrode potential for CR3 plus CR system is more negative, or you could say less positive there, than that for Cu2 plus Cu. Cr loses its electrons more readily than Cu, therefore Cr is more reactive than copper. Next part, explain why the student observed some bubbles of gas. Remember the copper 2 plus has been acidified, so there's H plus ions kicking about. There's H plus ions in system 1. So if we look at system 1, so here we've got chromium. Look, it's minus 0.74 volts. So this is more likely to go that way that's more likely to go that way. So you can see hydrogen will be produced. So we'll final part of the question, part E, about the methanoic acid or formic acid fuel cell. So in the fuel cell, methanoic acid, the fuel, reacts with oxygen to generate a cell potential. So you can see I've written up there a little reminder that the fuel always gives up its electrons in a fuel cell, whether it's hydrogen or in this case, methanoic acid, it's going to give up its electrons. 
So because of that, we need to um, look at the half equations with methanoic acid in. So you can see in this one, in seven, the methanoic acid is gaining electrons. So we don't want that one. We want this one. This is the one that gives up its electrons. So we're talking about system six, and it's obviously combining with system four, the oxygen um, half equation. So in terms of the cell potential, it's going to be 1.23, so that's the oxygen, um, most positive cell potential, minus the least positive, so the voltage is 1.45. And finally, two advantages of using methanoic acid as the fuel in a fuel cell rather than hydrogen. Here's three I came up with, so hopefully you've got a couple of these. Obvious one is methanoic acid is much, much easier to store or transport than hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen has to be stored under very, very high pressure. It's difficult to store and transport. Hydrogen is also extremely flammable, explosive, whereas methanoic acid isn't. So that's an advantage of methanoic acid. Finally, you could have said that methanoic acid gives a greater cell potential. So use the fact that you've just calculated in the first bit of the question the cell potential is 1.45 volts. If it had been the hydrogen um, fuel cell, just go back to these. So hydrogen fuel cell uses this half equation and this one, you can see you'd get a voltage of 1.23 volts. So obviously the methanoic acid generated a higher voltage. So you could say that that was an advantage of that type of fuel cell.